Hi, this is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com and today we're going to be talking about the marquee and lasso selection tools in Photoshop. Theme tune. Do 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 do. Lasso. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. <laughs> That's me yeehawing with my lasso. Okay, so what is the lasso tool and marquee tool and all these things in Photoshop? Well, these are the most basic and simplest selection tools in Photoshop. Now, just because they're the most basic and simplest doesn't mean that they're the least useful. They're actually incredibly useful. So we're going to be using a photograph today that we can practice all of these things on. If you want to use this image and get all of these tutorials, then head over to photosincolor.com. The link is in the description. And please like this video now. Why not? I usually do that at the end. Anyway, let's jump into Photoshop and have a look. So here we are inside Photoshop and we're going to be using this image today because there's lots of lines and selections that we can make. Now I did a tutorial the other day about layers and all sorts of different things within this, but now let's use this to practice our selections. So essentially the marquee tool, okay, is a way to select something as a square, like so. Or, well, an oblong, essentially, that is. If you hold down shift, it will be a perfect square. And that's basically what you can do with it. Now, you can also make selections as circles or ellipticals, because it's not a circle, because it's not round if it's, if it's um, like this. You know, this is an elliptical. If you want a perfect circle, shift, and then you can drag this. So loads of really great things that you can do within that. So you can make selections to move things and you can also make selections to be creative. So for example, let's, I don't know, select the middle of this, okay? Use the move tool and now I've cut that out and I've moved that section and it's completely round because it was the round marquee tool. So you can see that could be very, very useful. Command D to deselect. So those are some things just here. Now over here, you also have the lasso tool. Now in both of these tools, you have certain options. Let me just show you within the regular marquee. You can make a selection, hit Q so you can see what you've got selected. And then if you were to use the next one along, you can then add to that selection. Really simple. And then the next one along means that you can remove from that selection. And then let's just create another one. And then the next one is you can create an intersection. So to show that, that intercepted the last two versions. So for example, you can take the elliptical one, you can make a circle, then it's whatever is inside it. So for example, you can then take the rectangle, use the interception, go to the middle of the circle, and you've made a piece of pie, and that can then be a selection. Lots of different options there. You'll, you'll figure out what to use it for in the future. But then we have the lasso tool. Woo, yeehaw! I'm gonna say that every single time, I think. So with the lasso tool, yeehaw! You can do lots of other creative things. So essentially, this is a free form pen tool that I can then use to make a selection. Really simple. So for example, I could make a selection over here. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing there. I'm just making these selections. So, for example, I could make a selection around the middle of the iPad, which looks like that, and then I could move it and get rid of it, okay? So essentially, well, I've done content aware there, um, and it, I've moved it over here. But that's essentially what that would do. Now, step back, Command Option Z. There we go, I've no longer got that selected. So you can see that can be really useful for making kind of refinements where you may have already selected something and you've missed a section. So for example, we've made a selection somewhere and like this and say, oh, we don't want this section here. Well, if you wanted to just draw this, I wouldn't recommend necessarily on this. So we've got this selection, wanted to remove it, you could literally draw that and it would rem remove that set of selection. For example, very much, so you're gonna use this with all sorts of refinements. But the real power here is with the polygon and magnetic lasso, you, yee-haw, tools. This is gonna get difficult, isn't it? So um, let's have a look at the next one, which is the polygon. 
Essentially, this is a point to point. So let's make a selection of the screen here. You start at one point here, you click, and then it's gonna make a line that I can click at the next point. And then I can click at the next point, and then at the next one, and then you need to always close it. So like so, and now by hitting Q, you can see I've selected the screen. I just didn't do it very well. But you can see exactly how that would work. Very easy to do. So, for example, I've say done the polygon lasso and you can see what I've done. Let's zoom in here. I haven't really got it on that line. But interestingly, I have a really straight line. So that should be easy. So what I could do is I could add to it and then I could really go into the corner. For example, let's just do this sort of small section here and I've added to it and it's gone more along the line. But it's not a perfect corner, it's more of a curve. So I could go into the lasso tool and then I could draw a curve. Sorry, let's just come back. I want to add to this. I could draw a curve to kind of add that in. But that's not the best way of doing that either. The best way of doing this when you've got a nice clean line like this is using the next one, which is magnetic lasso. Yeah. So the magnetic, basically what it does, it's really powerful, is it sucks the line closest to where there's some contrast. So I've got a nice strong line here. I can click on the line and as I draw, what you can see is it's making points and it's actually drawing up on the line. I can pull away quite a long way Oh, I went too far there. And you can see it's pulling it in and it's drawing that line for me, which is massively powerful. So command D to get rid of that. And let's look at some options that we have, that we have in here. So <clears throat> there was a lot of talking, but let me just go through. We've got width. So that is how many pixels will it jump towards the line? So for example, if I put this at one pixel, now I've got to be close to that line for it to actually, I've got to be only one pixel away for it to jump. So you can see, as soon as I get away, it's not jumping towards that line. I have to be basically on the line for it to work. So that's really refined if you've got one pixel. There's never much use for that. But if you were to go say 100 pixels, okay, I can be all the way over here and look, it's pulling that line in. And what that means is when I get to this corner section, it's automatically just gonna draw the corner on for me. And if I was to come up here, finish that selection, now it's made that nice selection for me down here. And then, so that's quite clear, you can be in the middle somewhere, around 20 for me usually works. Now, uh, the next one here is contrast. So essentially that means how much contrast is it looking for? If you have 100% contrast, that means it's only gonna look for a line which is very, very contrasty indeed. Whereas if you have the contrast set at one, then it's gonna find all sorts of things that basically is not as contrasty like here on the table. It's gonna make all sorts of different points. Now, the final one here is frequency. How frequent do you want it to make one of those little points that it makes? Now you see here, at one, it's hardly making any points at all, okay? So it's only made a few points along that. And let me explain better on one of these keys. So if I draw around this key, okay, you see it's basically made four points around there. That's all it made. But if I have frequency at say 100, now if I draw around one of these keys, what you're gonna see is lots of little tiny points appearing. Now the reason why that's happening is any little variant that it's finding, little tiny curve within this, what it's able to do is it's gonna pick up on that and make those changes. So for example, on the Apple logo, what I'm gonna to want to do is have, um, this is actually quite a good setting for this. So I can draw around here and you can see it's actually drawing this Apple logo extremely well, drawing lots of points and it's drawing a beautiful curved line around this. So that's a great way of practicing right here. Now, the other options that you have with all of these tools is feather. So let's come in again and let's make a selection of this screen just here. Speed this up. 
quick selection tool, it's all black, there you go. Did that so you can see horses for courses. But for example, if we were to zoom in here on the quick selection tool that we've used, if I was to hit Q, you can see it's very hard line. And now let's use the lasso tool, yeehaw! And in fact, let's use the best tool, the polygon lasso tool for this. And I've got set to 50, like so. Now if I was to draw a brand new box around here, like so. Now I haven't been very accurate. Now when I hit Q, you can see what it's actually done is it's put a fade on the side of this. So it's actually feathered the edge of my mask in, which for something like this, you don't want to use, but for other items, you might want to actually blur that edge out a little bit. For example, if there's a blur in the image. So that's all of the different options that you've got there with your lasso tool and your marquee tool. And you can see it's all massively powerful. So something good to do is take an image like this one, deselect everything, and then practice with each one of these tools. Maybe go around and see if you can block out each of the white areas, maybe cut out each one of these screens, maybe a really good project to work on. Now, I wanna show you what the marquee tool is really good for. I'm gonna quickly come down here and I'm gonna make a new selection of the iPhone. I'm gonna use the polygon selection tool. So essentially, very quickly, I'm just gonna cut up the edges here. Now, what I'm also going to do with this, because there's round corners, so I can't actually do this, but I can do the straight edges. So that worked there. So I like that. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the magnetic lasso tool and I'm gonna to add to my selection and I'm gonna go around the corners. There we go, so you can see how powerful this is when I use multiple, but this one hasn't got this line. So now I can come in and use the regular lasso tool and I'm just free forming it. There you go, just free drew that in. Now it looks great. Now, Command J. So what I've done there is I've made this into a selection. Now, this is where the power of using something like the marquee tool is. Because for example, if I was to come back down here, let's, I'm just gonna use quick select for time, and I'm gonna select this up here, option to get rid of that area that it's selected that I don't want it to, and I'm gonna hit Command J here as well. So now what I have is I have both of these elements in here. Now, if I had both of these, and then I'm gonna, um, merge these two layers together. So I can just go merge layers by right clicking here. Now these are on one layer. So if I'm on the move tool, they're all moving at the same time. But the marquee tool, I can quickly select this, go over this one item, hit V which selects move, and now I've basically just selected this one section and I could hit command D, deselect, and on the marquee tool again by hitting M, I can just select that area, V for the move tool, and now I can move that one. So they're on the same layer, okay, but I'm just selecting them independently by using the marquee tool. And that really is how powerful the marquee tool can be. So let's just delete that layer just there. That there really is the power of the lasso tool, yeehaw! The magnetic lasso, yeehaw! And also the marquee tool. Loads of things to learn there. Definitely practice with this tool because it's gonna make things go really quickly inside Photoshop. Now, if you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and you can find out all the information on this and all my other tutorials on photosincolor.com theme tunes. Do -do 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 -do. Thank <laughs> you.